This is Papa Smurf. You're listening to Our Lifestyle, the podcast with ODB and the mayor. Yo, 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 it's ODB. This is Our Lifestyle podcast. We're getting ready to jump into the fresh episode. And we want to thank our title sponsors, which includes Custom Car Show Productions. They have three key events every year. Orange Beach Invasion every March in Orange Beach, Alabama. Scraping the Coast every June in Biloxi. And Bayou Showdown, which is every November in Slidell, Louisiana. We also want to thank Mini Truck Showdown Family, which includes their event, their flagship event, the first weekend in June 2022 in Las Vegas, Mini Truck Showdown. You can go on Facebook or Instagram for more information. They also have Kern County Showdown, which is going to be in Bakersfield, California, the first weekend in February 2022. Thank you so much. Support those that support the scene. And on to the episode. Yo, 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 it's our Lifestyle Podcast, episode 276, and I know Miggity Mike the Mayor dialed into the conference because I heard him coughing a second ago. Mike, what are you doing driving down the road, brother? Just out here gallivanting around Naples, Florida, brother, on my way home from the good old postal service. Dude, I could have swore I saw uh, somehow we had Wink, I guess it's the news station from down there. And somehow, when I came home, we had that channel on, and dude, they said the smut bandits on the loose again, and I don't know what it is. It, dude, there's something weird. It does resemble you, like you know. So I don't know. I guess it's just a coincidence, but you know, Dizzy found that that time. So you know, I hope that you know if you if you you know if you're kind of on the run like Hank usually is, I hope that you know you're good. Well, I turned Hank in. It was me. Come on, I confess. Dude. dude, you're you're a snitch. You know what stitches get? Stitches, stitches get snitches, right? Yeah, but bro, they were coming at me, man, and I had to. I had dude. to, man. I had to. Bro, you know it was Hank. I had nothing to do with it, and so I'm sorry, but I had to. Dude, I had to no turn com- him in. But hey, bro, there's no coming back from that, Mike. Well, dude, I don't know what it is, man. All the like black envelopes, all the plastic, all the magazines that used to come in the um the all black plastic. Yeah, I wasn't get I wasn't are, getting them no more. Those are wait, so are those like all time low in street trucks? All time low magazine and street trucks magazines. Well, no, because remember, all time low magazine comes in clear plastic. Ah, yeah, okay. I, I you, used to get I used to get magazines that come in all black, where you couldn't see what was on the inside. Oh, like the hater blockers, like the old sunglasses. It kind of has the black on it. Yeah, so they did like an internal investigation <laughs> on why all these magazines were missing from my mail route. Dude. And bro, come to find out. A, a guy that fits Hank's description was a guy that they found in the plant taking all these magazines. They were trying to nail me for it. It wasn't me. Dude, I'm telling you, man. Well, listen, I just don't want to hear you go in state's evidence because, I mean, this could easily, you know, uh, hinder our relationship here at OLP, brother. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to have to top rope. Hey, I can't. Man. Bro, I can't go down for that, though, man. I'm telling you, it looked just like Hank, though. The sketch that they gave me, it looked just like Hank. Dude. So I gave him his name and his number, and so we'll see what happens, bro. You know, Cypress Hill had the famous song, I Ain't Going Out Like That. You know, so I think uh, Hank sang the hook on it. But, Mike, dude, episode 276, man. We're getting sideways, of course, here, uh, kidding around a little bit. But on this episode, we've had someone on the list a while, Mike, and I'm very excited to mention who that is. I do want to thank everyone that went out to Kern County Showdown in Bakersfield recently. We haven't had a chance to link up with Corey to kind of talk about the you know the post show, right? Some of the numbers and, and some of the great things they did, but I tell you what, he brought the heat. We're excited for Orange Beach Invasion, which is going to be in a in about a month from the point that we're recording this, you know, a little, you know, last weekend in March, so we're going to be talking more about Orange Beach Invasion. We hope that you come out. But Mike on top of that, you kind of heard at the top, we're going to be out in Vegas. As of right now, we're planning to be out there the first weekend in June for Mini Truck Showdown and we're super excited. We can't thank Cordy and team enough. And I've heard a lot of West Coast kinfolk 
they're going to come on out and gallivant, Mike. And I'm telling you, if you don't gallivant to Vegas with us, so you can go to the Smut Palace or whatever it's called, dude, you're going to be missing out. And you're going to be at home jealous watching us on Facebook. So you better come, bro. I'm drawing the freaking line in the sand, dude. This is in your. This is going for your employee binder, dude. Mini Truck Showdown. Well, all I can say is Smut Fest. Smut, smut Fest. Smut, smut Fest. fest. Mike We're bringing com- it to Vegas. Bringing it to Vegas, baby. Well, maybe that'll get me the drive to kind of finish some of the planning that I'm doing. It's coming soon, Mike. I'm just I can't share all those details yet. You know what I mean? I'm thinking. Okay, all right, I'm thinking well, October. Just, you know, sunny Florida. Well, just give me so. the Iggy. Give me the Iggy. Give me the Iggy before you drop it. Okay, that's right. all I ask. Go Iggy. All right, for sure. But uh, we want to thank Graphics Mafia. We do have uh, an updated text here from Ryan. Apparently. Ryan is going to gallivant on, on out to uh, Lone Star Throwdown. He wants to hang out with Hank. Uh, he loves hanging out with Hank. I don't know what those guys, you know, kind of get into. They hit the bottle clubs. and uh, But, you know, Ryan and Buddy, hey, hey, hey buddy, over at Graphics Mafia. Hey, we, buddy. We want to thank them. Uh, if we're ever in a jam and we need stickers like we do for Lone Star Throwdown, we hit them up and they print them. They traffic that OLP dope across state lines, and then boom, they deliver G-R-A-P-H-I-X Mafia. They're on TikTok, they're on Facebook, they're on Instagram. Good people, right, Mike? Hey, buddy. Is that like Buddy Ryan? No, he was not the NFL head coach, but I do think, you know, he's got the name, dude, and if he doesn't get a jersey with Hey Buddy on the back, dude, then he's missing out, dude. He's missing the boat. Well, do you remember when Buddy Ryan punched that coach on the sideline? Oh, yeah. I mean, we need to bring back more of that, dude. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? When I talk, when we were at EB, EBGD, we, uh, when I, I, which I posted a video, there's a two-parter on OLP's YouTube page. When I pulled up, I saw, of course, the homie Chuck Dog. I got a chance to hang out with him last weekend as well. And uh, I, I said, Chuck, you know, the Miami had just, I think, had fired their coach or something. And I said, dude, you know, if they could bring back, I don't condone, um, you know, drug use. But you remember a few years ago, they did have the, the coach that was openly doing drugs, like sending videos uh, to his girlfriend, you know, doing the kind of stuff that Hank probably does, you know. And again, I don't condone that. You know, I don't want anyone to think that. But, you know, if they could bring back that guy to Miami, that might be kind of the push that they need. You know what I mean? Who was that guy? Do you remember? Dude, you don't remember the coach? Mike, I'm no. going to give dude, I'm gonna, this is not the trivia question, but I'm going to give you, okay, think of him. He was an older white guy. You know, I know you know who this is. You got to think, you got to think, his, you got to think through it. Older white guy. Dude. And he was in the it was Miami Dolphins? Yeah, he had the cocaine platter. I remember that. It was like it was something like 2017 because it was Ron Preston's birthday. Wow, bro. I honestly can't remember. I honestly don't remember. And here was the crazy thing. The mo- this model said that the ex Dolphin coach, I remember this headline, used her as a cocaine platter, dude. Ooh, that's my kind of guy. Dude, Chris uh, I think it was like Forster, F O E R S T E R. Offensive oh, line man. coach, he was a, dude. He was a happily married man, though. There's no way he would have done that, dude. I don't know. Again, I don't condone drug use, no matter no matter what. But I'm telling you, like the Miami, you know, that's kind of known for the, uh, you know, I, I'm sure you know you've seen the movie Scarface and stuff, right? I mean, I hope that you have. Oh, of course. Well, you know, that's even it's though, a cult classic. No, it's it's, it's a cult more than, classic. it's more than a cult classic. It, it's a true classic, Mike. You know, we got to get you oh, okay. to get these terms, you know, kind of in order, because you know <laughs> you're starting to get sideways here. But you know, a lot of it was filmed in California, but it had you know the the uh, the backdrop was basically Miami. So you know, I, I would think that you know he would be willing, you know, to kind of come in and help coach, and they could bring back him and stuff. So we have to see, man. You know. Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. You know, you. I got a question for you. What? And I, it, you just made me think about this when you talk about Colt Classic. As a kid, ODB growing up, what was one of your favorite cartoons? Remember Saturday mornings waking dude, up and dude. watching cartoons. What was one of your favorite cartoons growing up, ODB? Well, uh, this one's kind of easy. The main ones I remember watching, like in the early '80s 
were the Roadrunner and stuff like that, you know, Pepe Le Pew, like a lot of those that kind of have gotten canceled, I think, nowadays, you know, because some of the stuff was, I guess, crossing the line or whatever. But, you know, I don't remember all that stuff. But, you know, watching all of that stuff, I mean, that's that's really, you know, all those kind of like short little cartoons and stuff. Those are the ones I really loved, man. You, you remember the Roadrunner, right? Oh, absolutely. Beep, beep. Yep. Yeah, and all right. those were so part of... So let me of, ask you this. Yeah, that overarching... Um, uh, remember um, the guy with the shotgun, uh, with the hat. Yes, Elmer Fudd. Elmer Fudd, thank you. Wiley Coyote and all those. The you know that was that was a big part of my childhood. Absolutely, absolutely. So now the one thing that I always did when I was watching my cartoons on Saturday morning mm, was this I is had a family a- kind of podcast. Mike, don't you're not bro, bro, you relax, that. relax. I, can it I out if you were okay. No, no, no. I always had my bowl of cereal. What was ODB's favorite cereal growing up? Dude, man, I mean, you're going to laugh, bro. Now, I also want to <laughs> throw in, GI. once we got cable, we actually had cable on Land Lake somehow. That was one thing my dad always wanted. We got cable, and I did watch G.I. Joe. I think it was on USA Network. That was my favorite toy. That, that was my jam. But, dude, as a kid, I loved some Fruity Pebbles, dude. Ooh. Ooh, okay, okay. I'd have to say my favorite, one, my favorite cartoon growing up was always the Roadrunner because that fucker would always win. Yeah. I thought that was just like the best thing ever. And then two was um, Serial was, dude, Captain Crunch, man. Dude. That was by far my favorite. The original Captain Crunch, not Barry, not Peanut Butter, not any of that other crap. The original Captain Crunch was my by far my favorite. Yeah, Mr. T had the cereal too, which I always liked the the that one. And it's funny that you bring this up. Well, we weren't intending to of course talk about this at all, but Mr. or not Mr. T. Speaking of T, Ice T, he's recently on the Cheerios, right? And you know, Ice T always I love him in social media, the stuff he says and how he responds to people. You know, and people were like kind of clowning him and he was like, "Dude, <laughs> I'm in my 60s, dude." Still on a TV show, tied commercials, a million bucks for like a, a short commercial. I'm on cereal boxes. Like, dude, you know, once you make it to that level, you know, there's a lot of hate out there. So but we're going to talk about some more hate here in a minute, right, Mike? Oh, ooh, okay. But hey, that brings ratings, bro. That brings ratings. Dude, I love it. I, we, I do want to just hit upon, you know, we're going to try to keep it a little shorter for our segment, but... I don't think I mentioned, you know, we did this whole overview, and I still don't think I mentioned who our title guest is going to be. Now, many of you have already looked at the name of it and that type of thing, but uh, I'm excited to announce that Shane Andrews uh, will be on. And the cool thing is, you know, Shane's got this cool story with his truck and this tie into the military. So um, I'm excited to run that audio. He's been on the list a while, and it's just one of those where, you know, he's there on the list, and it's like, what's the right time? I see a post the other day, and I said, boom, this is it. I was actually helping Chuck Dog. We were doing surveying, okay? Not like Family Feud survey says. Dude, I'm a surveyor now, Mike. You know what I mean? Whoa. Yeah, I was out surveying, dude. I was like, bro, I was shooting lines, like the laser lines, and doing all that stuff, and – um. And so, I thought you just said you were snorting lines. I was like, no, bro. Shooting lines, bro. Come on, man. All right, all right. Just making sure. Just making sure. Yeah, and so when I was when I was helping Chuck Dog uh, over here before the show we went to last weekend, I was able to uh, link up with Shane and, and actually make it happen. So we, we, we got all that set. But the last episode recap, kind of as we move forward, I uh, just want to thank Ruben Artiaga. We call him the Booka, longtime RA member, as you guys, many of you know. Uh, if you've came here because of this episode with Shane, please consider uh, subscribing and or following. I know we kid around a lot. We joke a lot. But, hey, that's part of our show. Uh, Chad Luke also, of course, joined us as our title guest. Difficult times looking up. And... Mike, it's always great to sit down with Chad. You know, he he had a great run in 2021. He's still continuing that run. But for him to kind of be able to sit back a little bit, this is why we have this platform, and share and thank a lot of his homies and the people that have helped him get to where he's at. Dude, that's why we do it, brother. Oh, absolutely. Um, I thought it was for the bitches, but all right, I guess we can... can, uh, 
you know, I mean, I'll edit this out, but yeah, I mean, that's kind of the other part, right? <laughs> So the last episode recap brought to you by our family at Lone Star Throwdown. Uh, speaking of LST, we are going to try to link up with Radar for this week. Last year, I just waited a little too long, and then it was already LST week. LST should be an entire week, in my opinion. I know they're not going to want to hear that. A lot of hard work goes into Lone Star Throwdown. Although it's sold out, I would encourage you to still come on out. I talked to Craig Braid earlier today. A lot of the guys from their club. Pacific Northwest that are going to be gallivanting out, flying out, driving out, all that uh, kit, good stuff. And what's great is we'll be out there in a week. A week from this episode dropping, we're going to be in Boots on the Ground in Conroe, Texas, and we're looking forward to it. We can't thank Lonnie and Radar for the partnership. Uh, we certainly appreciate it. And Micah uh, LST 2022 hashtag is going to be on fire. We'll be posting videos, reels, and, of course, plenty of photos. So, Mike, uh, general updates. Hut 1, Hut 2, Hut 3, Hut. ODB live and uncut. Dude, so it's kind of live and uncut, but it's general updates as well. You know, ODB live and uncut, we did that a long time ago. We try to keep the positivity. I wanted to ask you, did you enjoy, you know, the Super Bowl kind of beginning to end the whole game itself? Did you really, you know, did, did you like it? Did you get into it? Uh, I actually really did like it. Um, for my gambling purposes, I would have I would have liked some more scoring um, for more opportunities to make more money. Um, but all in all, I liked it because it was a you know it was a good game. It was a close game, and um, the Bengals definitely had a shot. Definitely had a chance. Uh, they didn't you know they didn't come through, but that's okay. It was still a good game, and uh, I felt good for Math- Matthew Stafford. Uh, uh, you know, for winning the damn game and finally, uh, you know, getting a Super Bowl win um, after all those years of, uh, you know, playing on the Detroit Lions and all those losing seasons that he had. Uh, so, you know, I, it felt good for him. Um, and let's go ahead and get to it. The hold, halftime hold, show. Hold, in just a minute, though, because I got one more question for you. Short question, short oh. answer. Favorite, oh. favorite uh, commercial of SB56. The big game. Oh, that was the big game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, that was easy. It was the Cheetos commercial. I don't think I saw that one, I'm being honest. Do you you not remember the Cheetos commercial when she was in the um in the jungle? She dropped the bags of Cheetos and then all the animals come out and they started boop 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 boop. Started making all these different noises and made like a little rap with it. Uh dude, it was awesome. I missed that. It was awesome. Being honest, yeah, I definitely didn't see it. I I kinda you know, I, I was paying attention, but I kind of tuned out a little bit. So, good stuff there. I enjoyed the game. I do understand some of the calls. I know it's frustrating as a fan. I get it, especially if you're a, a, Bungle, a Bengals fan. The, you know, I, can, I tell you what, a lot of us were probably in the back of our minds. You know, we're rooting for Joe Burrow. You know, I mean, I think he's got swagger. I think he's going to be a great, a great player in the league. But, you know, even that one call on the four down, I mean, again, I don't agree with the way it went. I would say this, Mike. My pops used to always say it. You know, Lombardi would all, a lot of times would say, you know, there's one play in a game that can make or break it, and you want to be a part of that play, right? So we've all seen one of those, like a, a big pick six at the right time and that type of thing. But there were plenty of times, other times in this game, for the, the Bengals to have, you know, went ahead or, you know, stopped them. Uh, you know, I mean, he got sacked, I think, like a record amount of times in the Super Bowl. You know, so again, I, seven I, times. Yeah, I, I I feel bad for the Bengals fans. You know, you get to that that so far, you just want to be able to win it. But I tell you what, I mean, there was a couple times during the game, I was like, man, the Rams aren't going to be. I mean, I thought they gave it away a couple times, you know, and all the Bengals had to do, I think, is score there, score here, and, and boom, it would have been a totally different outcome. But you know, overall, I enjoyed it, man. My favorite commercial, I think, honestly, was towards the beginning. It was one of the first commercials. It was a uh, Toyota commercial, and they cut away, and it was. It, it talked about, and, and I want to look at, look into it a little bit more. But it's like two guys that do like a triathlon thing, and like since the one guy or the brother had went blind, they have won like twelve or ten gold medals or something. I mean, to me, like I I'm a big uh, I love that kind of um, the. Uh, 
I love the uh, real positivity stuff, you know. And then, of course, there was one that tied in the Skeletor and He-Man and that type of stuff. That was cool, too. So, Yeah, and you were correct about the the brothers, which that was pretty damn awesome. That was cool. That I did like that one. I tend to go towards the, the funny ones, yeah. and the Cheetos commercial, uh, to me, was, was probably one of the funniest ones. Yeah, no doubt. So you started to ask, I didn't mean to stop you earlier, um, the halftime show, right? You know, what did you think of it? Uh, I loved it. Absolutely loved it. The only thing I didn't care for was the Mary J. Blige uh, performance. Um, I thought she, you know, she could have just stuck the damn microphone in her mouth and and uh, and instead of all the damn screaming she did. But, hey, besides that, dude, Eminem, I thought absolutely killed it. Snoop Dogg is just, I, it's to me, it was awesome. I loved it. And it was all of our guys. And then you even said something about the whole 50 cent deal. And it was good to see him. I wasn't expecting him. And uh, so uh, I thought it was great, man. I, I loved it. Yeah. And some people were kind of saying, hey, you know, I read today that M maybe maybe gave up one of his songs and Mary J had given up one of hers or Kendrick. And then, you know, that allowed 50 to get in there, that type of thing. You know, I don't really know. There's, I mean, if we did a whole episode, we could really break it down, you know, there's the controversy with you know Snoop smoking a joint before, dude. It's California and it's Snoop. I mean, come on, you know. There's a little bit of controversy. I'm not going to get into that. I mean, there's some you know with this and that. Uh, a lot of folks were talking about was there going to be the hologram. I would remind people. I don't even think it was ten years ago. Dre about ten, twelve years ago. Dre financed the hologram. I think it was at Coachella. He worked with Tupac's mother. You rest in peace. She's since passed. And, dude, there was so much hate over it. And then, you know, I would have thought it would have been awesome to bring it out. But, you know, everybody's got an opinion on how it should have went. You know, people at work were like, yeah, you know, it would have been crazier than this. And then I was like, you're talking a whole concert. You know, they got 13 minutes. So, you know, again, I thought it was a good mix. Um, you know, I'm not – I love Mary J. You know, I love – I'm not the – you know, I don't know every one of her songs. I know Dre's worked with her and stuff. And, you know, maybe – you know, I, I would say most people would probably say, you know, a, a huge cult following women love Mary J. You know, there's a lot of dudes, too, that, that love her. But I think Mary J. and even Kendrick, I liked Kendrick stuff. You know, it's a little it, it's a little more than, like, your normal, like, you know, rolling down the street, smoking in dough, gin and juice. You know, it's a little bit more kind of, you know, deeper than I want to maybe think sometimes maybe during the Super Bowl. I think that's what a lot of people thought. But I think overall the show was fantastic. You know me. I love some Death Row, some Aftermath. Uh, I had put the breaking news last episode, Mike, that Snoop acquired Death Row. So a lot of that stuff was kind of aligned. And, uh, dude, you know, I thought it was pretty cool. Uh, yeah. No, I definitely agree, brother. And uh, like I said, because a lot of people are complaining about this too, only thing that I thought was missing from the halftime show was a fact that they didn't get out there and drive off on the cars, <laughs> dance the cars. But besides what they did is they fucking had those girls dancing all over the hoods of the cars. Come on, man. Come on, man. Well, here's something funny. Kurt was one of our severed founders. He had commented on that as well, and it was like, man, the only thing that was missing was the cars dancing, right? And listen, I'm not going to go into a whole big thing. I did mention the ODB live and uncut. <laughs> a lot of this stuff is rehearsed, that's planned. The NFL watched every single rehearsal. There was a couple things they didn't want to happen, you know, some things here, some things there. But, you know, that stuff is planned. And and the thing is, and Mike, I know a lot of us as car guys, truck guys, you know, we you know, we cringe at that stuff. I mean, dude, I I truly think that, you know, some people just get they, they get too I don't know, my opinion is, and everybody's got an opinion, right? So since we have a podcast, I'm going to share mine. Everyone just gets too caught up on what other people do, right? So I can understand, you know, like a lot of us, we watch Magic and we're like, oh, wow, you know, like I think Magic's cool. I'm like, man, how do they do that? And then I'm like trying to overanalyze and go, oh, I bet you I know, you know, that type of thing, right? But this show, if, if you follow some of the right guys on Instagram, you'll see that, you know, these hoods were reinforced, okay? And I get, you know, they could have still stepped on the fender and stuff. I'm not a fan of, you know, dancing on cars. You know, the game had a song, standing on Ferraris. I'm like, okay, I think some of that stuff is just dumb. You know what I mean? At the end of the day. But, like, the people, uh, I posted something and some, you know, some low-rider guys were coming at me going, man, you don't understand the culture. It's bullshit. You know, they should. So, so I politely, Mike, went over and tagged, 
I, I tagged those guys' names on the owner's post and said, hey, why are you getting mad at me? Like, don't take your anger out on me. You don't even know who the fuck I am. Go over here and tell the owners you don't like it, okay? I think, though, Mike, my last thought on it is, why do you care what other people do? You know, some people are like, oh, man, those the cars. and the, Dude, do you know how many Impalas they made? I love 63 Impalas. I love 64 Impalas. I love them. The Lincolns, a lot less were made. A lot less. Okay, I wouldn't want to necessarily jump on my car, but Mike, let me ask you this. Let's say that was your car, and you're linked up with Dre, and you know Dre financed this whole halftime show about $7 million from what I understand. And let's say yep. they go, hey, can we rent your car? We need it like Thursday, Friday for, for Thursday Friday for rehearsals, blah, blah, blah. And oh, by the way, we're going to have some people dancing on your hood. Okay, we'll make sure they don't get on the fender, whatever. If they do, we'll pay for it. What would a number have been for you if you were one of the owners? I just want to kind of know. I'm trying to get someone else's perspective. Dollar wise. Uh, honestly, just the fact that they're using my damn car in the video, I probably would have been perfectly okay with. <laughs> but, you know, let's, let's say it was 10, 20, 30 grand, maybe 50. I don't know the number, okay? But some of those guys, if you watch the one video, this guy had like 20 hoods they had painted, okay? And the three <laughs> different colors. So think about it. Let's say they dance on the hood. And then they take it off, and then Dre signs one, and Stoop signs one, and then and then they sell one for ten grand or twenty grand. Oh, that was the famous hood. But at the end of the day, Mike, as I've got older, I've just learned: don't worry about what other people are doing. It's entertainment, absolutely. If they would have lit the car on fire, I probably would have a little bit different, you know, take on it, unless it was like a <laughs> fiberglass body or something, right? But listen, it's entertainment. And nothing you or I say or all this rage that's on Facebook. I did. I went on Facebook like thirty seconds, and I'm like, really? Like, there's people that have been in our truck scene like thirty years, and they haven't. They don't even have trucks anymore, and they're just like arguing on Facebook about, yeah, it's bullshit, and this and that and this. I'm like, dude. You mean the same guys are out there dragging and tearing the roll pans off their trucks that they so dearly love? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah, and they're just like I, I, I just, I just, don't, I, I don't know, Mike. I mean, how, I mean, how, how, how could they do, let them do that? I, I don't know. It's like, here's some feedback for you. Who gives a shit? Okay, I got plenty of other things to worry about in life. Okay, I'm not worried about some guy. Uh, I'm not. Uh, I'm not gonna say. Uh, you know, I love watching the sideshows from Oakland. Okay, SSBB Media, Anthony, he knows that. I love, you know, I get the whole culture thing. That's an Oakland thing. I, I get it. Would I ever go out there? I can't even do a donut, right? But would I ever go out there and where the people and I could hit someone and kill someone? Or No, absolutely not, right? Do I even condone it? Probably not, dude. You know what I'm saying? That's some crazy stuff, right? Some hood stuff that goes down. But, dude, like I'm not going to go on Instagram and like tell these people that not to do it. Because, Mike, could you imagine me going, hey, I guys, this looks a little unsafe. I I, I wouldn't be doing a donut like in the street. Oh, oh, my God, he just hit a guy. Do you think me saying that is going to stop any of it? Uh, no. no. They're going to laugh at me, right? So, like, dude, just get over it. The owners of the cars posted the video of them going, dude, you guys are tripping. These aren't the original hoods. They're reinforced. They danced on them. We got our cars back. We've changed the hood already. We got paid in bags of cash. So if it's yep. ten or twenty or fifty grand, boom, whatever. So that's all I got to say. It's not. It's not taking a shot at anybody. Is it a wow factor? Absolutely, absolutely. But look at how much publicity they've got just from that. Exactly. 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 So, anyways, general update. Mission accomplished. Yeah, brother. General updates brought to you by Southeast Mini Truck and Nats, also known as Mini Nats. We're going to be out there late April. We're going to be talking to Jason Bell and team very soon. VIP parties coming Saturday night. Of course, there's going to be lots of stuff going on. Mini Nats on Instagram and Facebook. Come on out to Maggie Valley, North Carolina and link up with us. So, Mike, before we wrap it, I know um, we're kind of getting to the 30-minute mark. I do want to ask you trivia with mike and then i'll finish up a couple things yes. and we're gonna roll in hopefully to radar right talk a little bit about lst but dude mike i mean players you got to get ready right mike i mean you the whammies no whammies right mike 
Okay, players, now it's time to get serious. Uh, dude, I am ready. Dude. Let's do this. Let's do this, ODB. I, I kind of feel like sometimes like I'm going to ask one that's too easy, and I kind of feel like this one is. I had a real uh -oh. hard one, and I was like, dude, Mike's not going to know that. So I'm going to ask All you right. the two-parter. I know you're probably not going to know the second part, okay? Okay. But okay. I, I don't know. I'm almost going to get clown because this one's way too easy. So Lawrence Cohen starred in one movie, and I think it was only one movie, and he stopped being in movies after that. I think he was 14, and he played a famous character in a movie, okay? Now, he did become a lawyer, so he I think he's an entertainment lawyer is what he does now. But when he was when he was when he was younger, he was very chunky in this movie, and it's one of my favorite movies of all time. So, you know, I kind of feel like that's too easy. I've even been to the movie site locations for this one, but okay. again, he so was that's, pretty. That's... He was he you know he's pretty chunky in this movie. Okay, so is that all you're giving me? Is that is that it? Yeah. Okay, because as soon as you said the name, I knew exactly who you were talking about. No way, and, dude. But listen, I didn't know that he was a lawyer. I did not know that. Yes, he became. Uh, he's a lawyer, and the famous. How many? How many times? How many times do you think he's been asked? Do it, dude. Come on, come do on. it. Come on, man. Hey, you're not coming in unless you do it, Mike. Could you do it for us, baby? Roof. <laughs> you know, dude. But, you know, this kid was absolutely amazing. He was. And he was probably, like, one of my favorite. And this was by far one of my favorite movies of yes. all time. And, I mean, this movie was an absolute cult classic. Yes. I'm just shocked. I'm just shocked that, uh, you know, that you, you gave me such a softball of a question. Because not only did I just give you the movie poster <laughs> to this did. movie. That's why I asked you. <laughs> yes. And guys, check this out. It was real. I'll give you a quick story. I'm out delivering mail. I look over. This lady is throwing away. An, and this is an original, guys. Yeah. No, no joke. Original movie poster of the Goonies. Dude, Drew Strews and artwork. It was awesome. Right away, I jump out of my truck, grab it. It was in a frame and everything. Dude. And I was like, that's got ODB written all over it. So I did give that to ODB this past uh, this past Saturday when I seen him. What he didn't tell you is that's how he smuggles the smut because I think it's that same lady that always puts it out there, and it's in the back of the frame, ain't it, bro? Like bro, that, like, you weren't supposed to say that. It's not the treasure map. <laughs> it's the magazine. <laughs> Dude, That I figured it's it out, Mike. Oh, shit. Well, you weren't supposed to know. You weren't supposed to say that out loud. But yes, the movie you are referring to is The Goonies. And by far, is it, that is absolutely a cult classic. Hey, you guys, you got to let me in. I saw the most amazing thing in my entire life. And of course, uh, for those that don't know, two quick things. He's only done the Truffle Shuffle one time since the movie. And apparently he did it at the college that he went to. He was at a football game. And the camera panned over to him, and like the crowd chanted, and he finally did it. My understanding is that's the only time he's done it. Number two, if you want to go down the wormhole, look up his shirt, and it ties into other another Steven Spielberg's movie, as does a couple of different outfits. And they think that, you know, the uh, the folks that do the outfits and whatnot for Steven Spielberg movies, that was a nod to other movies of his. So it's kind of cool. The last thing I have, Mike, is uh, did you know there was a Goonies? Uh, they swore an oath of allegiance to each other, but unfortunately the scene um, from the final version was cut, and the pledge uh, never appeared, but it was, I will never betray my goondock friends. We will stick together until the whole world ends. Through heaven and hell and nuclear war, good pals like us will stick like tar in the city or the country or the forest, or the boonies, I am proudly declared a fellow goonie. So that's some kind of 80 cheese there for you, you know? Bro, you are amazing. Dude. The, 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 the knowledge in <laughs> ODB's noggin just blows my mind.
Dude, you're crazy. Well, listen, we want to thank All Time Low Magazine for the continued support. The new issue is about to ship. ATLmagazine.com to order individual issues or subscribe. Mike, I think that's it for this week, man. Any last words, dude? Bro, hey, guys, just make sure you guys are going out there. The Spark Show pre-registration is open. Go pre-register for the Spark Show. And, uh, you know, our boys Adam Tripp and Dizzy Don Davis, uh, go support those guys. And um, I just came across that. So go out and support those guys. And I look forward to seeing all you guys at LST. Uh, what are we, down to two weeks now? Yeah, and, technically uh, one one week from the date that this one drops. Yes. So look forward to seeing all you guys at LST. Make sure you guys come by and, and uh, check out the booth. You can't miss it. We've got like the best spot in the house. And uh, just look forward to seeing everybody, man. I look forward to making that long drive and uh, having a damn good time over in Conroe, Texas. Mike, I got the toothpicks ready for your eyes, brother. You're going you're gonna to need them, uh, aren't you? Like the old cartoons, bro. Hey, it's all good, brother. It's all good. Tom and Jerry, baby. Uh, it, that was notorious for uh, for putting those damn things in uh, in his eyes all the time. But all right, no, man. brother. Hey, with that being said, Airhead Nation, we are at you. On to the next one. We at you, bro. Late. Hey, hey, as I mentioned here with the scene updates, you guys get sick of hearing me talk, so I like to... You know, phone a friend and Radar Todd, Radar Hendix. How you doing, my brother? Good, man. How's it going? Good, good. Hey, I know every year in February, there's all this excitement. You know, last year was the 10th annual, I believe. This year's the 11th. Uh, I know you're getting excited. I know Lonnie is as well for Lone Star Throwdown, also known as LST 2022, man. Yeah, it's around the corner. It, uh, it's coming up quick. <laughs> well... The, the show continues, at least from my calculation, continues to sell out a little quicker every year. Are you ever amazed at how fast the the 2,000 or so uh, tickets go, man? Yeah, this year for sure, because uh, we finished in, what, September? You know, usually it's the last hour when everything fills up. Yep. Uh, you know, usually on December 31st and this year, I mean, it couldn't believe how fast it went. So I look forward to even go quicker next year because there were so many people that, that – Oh, man, it's already sold out. We're surprised that it was done so fast. Yeah, 100%. And, you know, we kind of know, I I call it kind of LST season when it starts kind of rolling around because we start to see our friend, uh, you guys, real close partner, Phil Built Designs. Uh, I always encourage people, if you want to go see some crazy awards, just search on Facebook, Phil Built Together Designs. You know, when we start seeing those awards pop in, um, you know, he, he continues to outdo himself, and, and really it's it's great to see you and Lonnie uh, push so hard to make these over-the-top awards uh, for this show because you guys have always reinforced that's one thing that, that you guys, you know, take pride in. Yeah, for sure. I mean, you know, Phil's the star of it. We just kind of threw some ideas at him, and he ran with it. And, you know, the detail on everything is, is awesome. I mean, there's things that we, we would have never thought of. Um and then the best to show this year is is huge. Mm-hmm. Many pieces. I don't know if people have seen that thing, but it, it's it's awesome. Yeah, it's a work of art, and I think some of these things, you know, it puts it into perspective. As you know, you and I, long time, you know, many truckers and stuff, we all know that we don't go to shows uh, for awards. But what's is, what's amazing is with the time and effort that people are putting in some of these amazing builds. It blows my mind, Radar, because if you think back, you know, right, just briefly, real quick, before we get to the show, if you think back to the years that we've been involved, the truck scene really has risen to a level that I, I can't say I ever thought we'd necessarily get to with these amazing amount of builds. And it, what I think that translates to is your team that you guys utilize there for the show aspect, uh, or excuse me, for the judging aspect. It, it makes their their jobs very difficult, doesn't it? Yeah, it's 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 hard as heck. Uh, I don't envy them at all. And, uh, you know, I sure as heck don't have the time to do the judging. You know, there's some stuff that we go around and pick out, uh, but we let you know Steve Green and all his guys do it all. And I do not want that job because man, it's hard just driving around, seeing what's out in the show field is is crazy. I don't know how you would pick one from the other. And I do know that the you know the the points between the top 100s are very close. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and one aspect that we've touched upon, I think it was a couple years ago, uh, keep me honest, the drive-through judging 
I I truly believe that that must really aid those judges through that entire process, right? Because you guys do have it set up for the most part uh, for a drive through judging, right? Yeah, that's correct. Now, they still will go out and find the guy that doesn't want to go and and drive yep. it through field, the show field or he's indoors or he's got a display set up. But, yeah, you know, the, the majority of them do run through that drive through judging. Yep, yep. It's got to be one quick question I had for you. It's got to be a great feeling when you think of all of these amazing vendors that are in this area. You know, we've seen the truck scene explode. Texas is smacked out in the middle of the country, but you got extensive in your backyard. Uh, you know, you have Ronnie and team that do the whole uh, eastbound and down right from out on the west coast. You guys just got to be thrilled every year to continue to see the truck, uh, the support from the truck community. Oh man, and absolutely, uh, it's so cool that. People still want to come out to this thing and, you know, have a good time, see people and, you know, take the time off of work to go. Uh, we, you know, we've said it a thousand times. We never dreamed it would turn into what it has. It was never, hey, let's have this big event this in this park. It was never the thought. It was just, hey, let's put on a show, everybody to get together. And, man, it, it turned into something huge. Yeah, real deal. If uh, folks are on Facebook, you can search Lone Star Throwdown, three words, and you'll also say they have a public group. A lot of cool stuff is shared in there, a little bit of uh, hints at what's going to be there, LST Crunch and things like that. When you think of this event and all the successes that you've had, right, what are a couple of the key things if, if, if folks are on their way listening or, you know, we're one week out almost from the day that this airs, what are maybe some of those top three things or a couple things that come to mind that people uh, can do to, to, to make things easier for you uh, and your entire cast and, and family and friends that help out with the event? I think the biggest thing is just when you get on the property and, and you're, you're dealing with any of the staff, just be mindful that there are families and sons, daughters, wives and all that. And, uh, you know, we're here to help try to do our best. Yeah, and I think like wearing the wristbands, making sure they're on. But yeah, wristbands and the stickers on the cars. You know, making sure that you know uh, the st- stickers are on the vehicles for judging, and plus just being able to get in and out of the park. Uh, you know, that's the important thing because we're Lonnie and I are, and every every other uh, staff member that is a truck guy. You know, they don't know what is a show truck and what isn't because it's just. It, again, it could be family and daughters and sons, and yep. you know if it doesn't have that sticker on it, they're not going to let it in. Yep, that's the rules of the rules, and uh, we definitely hear that. Now, you know, I didn't want to bring this up, but you know, the Decorvers, we're hoping they steer clear of the show this year. You know, we told Kim and David, you know, <laughs> come on, kind of stay away. But it the only also, thing they need to watch out for are the telephone poles. That's it. Yeah, they even made a cameo in a shirt from Florida. Yeah, uh, so you've seen that, but. When when you think of uh, you know all the clubs that come out and all these vendors and things like that, one of the cool things that I do like that you guys I, I don't know if you were originally uh, set out to do this, but uh, everyone seems like they do love to fire their stuff up at some point. You know, some people come from California. I've seen like Slam sixty four out there with his amazing rides in the past. But you guys do allow for people to fire up their vehicles and kind of drive that loop. I'll call it right. That that is a yeah. cool thing. Does that ever you know cause any issues or anything that people should know with that? Yeah, it can. So you know the reason we let the cruising and it's kind of hard to police that when people are going through drive through judging. But you know when it starts getting backed up, really clogged up, it does affect vehicles getting in the park. And you know if the if you see somebody trying to get you to park or telling you to park, it's it's not because we don't want you to have fun. It's we're trying to get other you know truck enthusiasts into the into the park. In a timely manner. So, uh, you know, sometimes we got to tell you to park just to keep the grid locked down. Yeah, definitely. And, you know, I'm a Lincoln guy, so we can't drive our Lincolns for too long without them not wanting to overheat. So, you know, sometimes I tell people as much as it's fun, uh, you know, you're going to be sometimes in a little bit of gridlock there. And you got to be careful because, you know, some of those yeah. big, big blocks, they get hot quick. You know what I mean? Yep, they do. Um, one aspect that I do want to hit on is the t-shirts right and this awesome show uh, artwork that you guys continue to have you kind of you know you work back with graphic disorder i think does a lot of the printing and stuff but you also have one of your longtime friends design one of the i'd call it an old school kind of artwork shirt could you talk to us about how people can buy the uh the, the show shirts yeah actually i'm gonna give him a plug patrick maxwell is the 
Max, Maxwell Auto Design is the guy that, that does all of our artwork for us. Um, he, he's he's really good. Uh, he hell he's the one that's done graphics on both of the trucks I've built. But mm-hmm. uh, yeah, we'll have the t-shirts over there uh, under the pavilion as usual, uh, kind of in a in a snack bar uh, behind the glass. You know, you have to stand in line and wait it out. And Friday they go on sale. Yeah, Friday, and I always encourage people go ASAP. Because if you're like me and you procrastinate a little bit, you know they can be gone. And to me, it's always one cool thing. You go to a show, especially like Lone Star Throwdown, the magnitude, and you got that keepsake. Um, I do believe, right in the past, you guys have also offered some metal signs. Do you think that we'll have an opportunity to buy those this year? Yeah, we have the metal signs and the logos. We've done some banners with the, with the artwork. And uh, Lonnie's also done some skateboards cool. this year. Um, we've done some hats, uh, some big brim kind of straw hats, yep. uh, and of course the ball caps. So we've we've got a little bit more uh, stuff to sell this year. Yeah, hundred percent. And before I do want to get a plug in for Garage Gear in a minute, but when you think of anything else, uh, Radar, um, anything else from a Lone Star Throwdown twenty twenty two perspective that you might want to share or reinforce to all the listeners? Just drive safe. You know, be be careful traveling. Take your time. Park's not going anywhere. Uh, and be safe in the park. You know, let's try to keep the, the burnouts down out to the roadways, not in the park. Too many people walking around. Uh, just be safe. That's that's what we want. Yeah, 100%. And, and my little plug for uh, anybody coming into town, I went to Rudy's last year. I actually ended up there on Saturday night. All A lot of the NC guys were there, and it was cool. Got a chance to talk to 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 uh, you know Ronnie and and Chaz and some of those guys, but it had been almost twenty years since I had been to Rudy's. Believe it or not, back when I went to Heat Wave many many years ago, and that's one place that I'll say that I'm going to go this year again. <laughs> yeah, it was funny. The first time I ever been was with Rob Rodell and Courtney. Uh, Courtney was in town doing some stuff for street trucks, and I, I drove down around or up to Round Rock, and they're like, "Hey, we're going to eat barbecue at a gas station." I was like, "That does not." <laughs> Like a vow. And then when we got there, I was like, oh, okay, it's an actual restaurant. I didn't feel so bad. Yeah. So, yeah, I remember when I went back in the day, I think they still do it. They had like a wax piece of paper that they put down. They had those old, like, little yep. crates, and it just had a, a great feel. And now they have, you know, freestanding stores and stuff. But before I mention Garage Gear Clothing, I wanted to ask you any hints. You guys have briefly hinted about a Lone Star Throwdown documentary kind of style film. Right, I know that you may or may not be prepared to share anything with that. I've seen Grinder in a couple of those photos with Brian. Um, any hints that you have for maybe what's coming with that? Yeah, Brian uh, ran around and filmed us last year as we were setting up, and then he actually made a drive to Conroe and uh, did some finishing interviews with us a few weeks ago. And I think they're talking about letting that thing go live, I think, Friday. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah, I would encourage people to go check it out. I know uh, Lonnie does a fantastic job with some of the videos, and you know, you guys have a unique opportunity. Oftentimes, you guys are kind of splitting up and going to different events, but he's always out there hustling. Um, I know you can follow Lone Star Throwdown on Facebook, Instagram, uh, YouTube, and I think TikTok. I think are all uh, and gra- excuse me, Garage Gear is is more on the YouTube side. But um, man, th- yeah. th- that's got to be exciting. Yeah, it's, it's going to be cool. It'll be interesting to see what uh, how everybody, you know, sees kind of the back end of some stuff that they normally don't see. Yeah, it's a lot of work. Finally, with Garage Gear Clothing, I know um, you and, and Lonnie and the wives have linked up on it. I love that you guys continue to refresh um, some of the shirts, like with the Garage Gear, the Apache shirt. There's, of course, plenty of Garage uh, Girl uh, content out there as well. Um, it, it's got a bring a smile to your face when you guys travel to so many shows and you set up that awesome booth and you kind of sit back and you've seen how much you've grown that brand uh, and you get a lot of support for the scene, man. Yeah, it's really cool. And, you know, when you're going to events and you just see them out and about walking around is, is really cool. Yeah. Uh, it, you know, never dreamed that it would, I mean, we hoped it would turn into something and, uh, you know, every year it grows a little bit. So we're happy with that. Yeah, I would encourage folks, garagegearclothing.com. You can check it out. It's free shipping in the U.S. And uh, finally, lonestarthrowdown.com. I I jokingly refer to folks there. I know that the tickets do sell out, but you can get a lot of good information out there, including the countdown ticker, 
We're about nine days, 12 hours, and three minutes as of the time of this recording away. And uh, Radar, I'm so excited to see some of the trucks that show up there. I've said this before. It's the biggest, baddest truck show in my mind in the world. And I mean that with all due respect because you've got a mix of old school, new school, minis, full sizes, you name it. Plenty of lifted as well. I know uh, you know, American Force and some of these these companies go real, real big for it. So we're excited for it, brother. Well, that's cool to hear you say that because I know y'all do a lot of stuff. But one thing I like for y'all to know too is we, we do a top ten mini truck award. Um, you know, we give out ten fill built awesome, you know, machine billet awards and they are so cool. I, I I wish I had something that I could win one with, but <laughs> you know, they're heavy. I mean, they're probably 25 pounds, 20 pounds from that line and just really detailed, really cool. So if you got a mini truck, you know, y'all need to start registering and try to win one of these things. Yeah, we got to continue to reinforce that. We'll have an award as well that'll kind of go in with the skate decks. But uh, I would tell folks, you know, don't forget to go over to, as Radar mentioned earlier, the indoor side of it, way over on the kind of the right side. I know our friend Eddie Gordy, I talked to him recently and he was so thrilled with some of the work that you guys have maneuvered and I know you guys always are looking out for, you know, even Carl last year, you got him over in that indoor area. So, you know, we're excited to see all the heat that's brought and we just can't, uh, you know, thank you guys and your team enough for throwing the show. We know it's a lot of work. It is. And, you know, y'all be safe coming down. We appreciate everything y'all do, uh, pushing it and giving us good press. Stay on the rise, my brother, and be safe driving over to Dallas. Maybe stop in, get a, get an In-N-Out burger for us. You know what I mean? <laughs> Never know. May, may hit one on the way home. <laughs> Thanks, Radar. Talk to you soon. Yo, thank you, Radar, so much for coming on to give some key updates. One week from now, we will see many of you at Lone Star Throwdown in Conroe, Texas. Trust us. It's a bucket list show. It's one that if you can make it every year, you're fortunate. Hey, fantastic. If you can't make it out next year, again, this is the 11th annual. We're so, so looking forward to it, and we appreciate Radar. Uh, we're going to hold them to those in and out burgers because there is one. I think the furthest one to the East Coast, my understanding, is in Dallas, Texas. Some of the fiends, they drive out there each year. So um, what I'd like to do now is just kind of wrap up um, Mike and I's segment from earlier today. So I know we kind of started with some of the scene updates, and we'll give a few more here. I thought it was pretty cool that Eric Jones from Graphic Disorder, he had posted uh, a stack of old photos from Mini Nats and loved seeing those, loved seeing the history of our scene. Uh, Thanks so much to him and, and the team there, really just that Graphic Disorder in general. Definitely really appreciate them. We saw the family, Brian Nelson, they had posted that the cat is out of the bag and their gold digger Tahoe, two-door Tahoe's on the rise, appears in a custom truck's bag. So uh, congratulations. And, uh, you know, I know Juan Trevino was involved in that. And uh, it's pretty cool to see uh, custom truck's bag, a.k.a. truck trends from Japan over the pond. Uh, love seeing the success of those guys. Uh, just really good people and uh, good stuff. Mark Zeitzer, uh, he has gotten into collecting old magazines, and congratulations, he got issue number one. This is really cool. He said he's missing about 40, I think, issues, but you know he didn't originally start purchasing them until 9-6. Uh, the magazine, of course, started, as we all know, in 88, and um, he goes on to say he's received the holy grail of mini truckins. I sound like Richard Rawlings, right? Issue number one from summer 88. But the story goes on that it was the original managing editor, Larry Savedra. Savedra? I never knew how to say his name. Uh, He sold the issue. And uh, he told uh, some stories of being the first editor when he was younger, working with Steve Stilwell. So it would be cool to go back and uh, talk with Mark. I know he's a big supporter of the podcast. He's always hustling. And technically, if you look at it, I never broke it down to managing editor. I always had kind of Steve Stillwell because he was the editor, but you know, Mark brings up a great point. Technically, Larry, he was, you know, the first guy, right? You know, as a managing editor. So very cool piece 
of our uh, mini truck in history. So, you know, great stuff, Mark. And again, would love to link up with you here real soon and talk more about that. So those are some of the scene updates. I know we probably missed some from this week. It's just been real busy balancing personal and uh, work and all that stuff. And of course the podcast. So, you know, we'll come at you guys next week with another new episode. We do have other audio already recorded. We are going to be doing some audio from Lone Star Throwdown. So that's going to be exciting. And I just want to say the scene updates is brought to you by Garage Gear Clothing. When we talked to Radar just a few moments ago, you know that Garage Gear is part of their umbrella. So go out to garagegearclothing.com, order some merch, free shipping in the U.S. If you're at Lone Star, go by and let them know that OLP sent you. All right, next we get the key show updates. And this one we'll kind of make brief. So, you know, what we're trying to do is kind of keep it in the scope. Um, but we do want to thank uh, our family for always coming on board with us, and it sparks in the park. I've been out there the last two years. This show is the first weekend in April, so April 2nd through the 4th, we're going to be doing an award, an OLP award, and we're still kind of in talks, like do we do the best maybe 80s, 90s costume? Do we do the mullet award again? You know, We'll have to figure it out, but it's at the Mullet Festival grounds in Niceville, Florida. We can't thank Kib and David enough. We want to have them on soon. Uh, The next few shows, though, that we're going to be talking about is Relaxing on the Ranch. So that's going to be the weekend after Lone Star. We're going to be down in Lake Wales. And then Orange Beach Invasion. I know I keep mentioning this, but OBI, uh, there's definitely some choice this year, right, with this weekend. And if you haven't been to Orange Beach Invasion, we would highly suggest that you make it out. Now, there's two Orange Beach Invasions accounts. There's the one that Robbie kind of oversees, and then the one that our friend, rest in peace, Greg Miller, would oversee. So Orange Beach Invasion show. And then Orange Beach Invasion itself is the one that Keg Media kind of handles. And remember, they were split on their duties because uh, they partnered up for this event, Custom Car Show Productions, Keg Media. March 25th through the 27th at the Wharf. Look it up, The Wharf on Google Maps. It's an amazing venue, Orange Beach Invasion. And again, it's going to be the last weekend in March this year. So after that, I think on the radar at least, basically is we're going to be at Mini Nats a month from then. So that's the 23rd through the 25th in Maggie Valley. And the key here is that uh, many of us began to receive our quote-unquote golden ticket. It's technically, again, the 24th. Uh, This year is actually technically the 22nd through the 24th, 2022, Maggie Valley, North Carolina. Don't miss it, you know, from the cruising aspect to the just the locals and the the kind of the hometown feel. It's the biggest, baddest mini truck show in the world, in my opinion. And we love going out and supporting Jason Bell and folks. Uh, Remember, their merchandise is going to go quick. As soon as you can get there and start buying the skate decks, the shirts, all of that stuff, It's going to be gone. We're also finalizing our details of our VIP party. So it's the mini Nats. Jason Bell allows us to do the VIP party. I know Sean Rose from Rose Metalworks is going to be involved. DJ Mays, Asphalt Army, Hammered Weekend Wear, of course, and then OLP. But kind of a 90s theme, I believe, that you're going to kind of see. And it's going to go down. It's going to be a couple of hours. uh, And all you'll have to do is be able to... Uh, to you know, to basically support one of the three brands of your choice, buy some merchandise, and if you spend X amount, you automatically and you ask, you'll receive while supplies last the badge. That badge will get you in to the event, probably looking like four thirty to six thirty, maybe five to seven. But we do want to get it over by the time most people want to peel away and go cruise. So look at it like this: you support one of those three brands, Asphalt Army. Hammered Weekend Wear, OLP, and the biggity boom, you're patched in for that event. Uh, It's a great photo op going down. We'll have music playing. And then, oh, by the way, you'll also have a meal provided. So I know it's kind of earlier in the day. You know, many of us kind of skip lunch there. We're having a good time. And then that leaves plenty of time. You know, you go cruise. You do what you want to do. You can still get dinner several hours later. So we'll see you guys, Maggie Valley, North Carolina. Very, very, very soon. I did mention Sparks of the Park. So again, that's the first weekend in April. So I kind of leapfrogged that one there when I was going through the chain of uh, upcoming events. But Sparks in the Park, April 2nd through the 4th. 
We'll talk more about it. The Mullet Festival grounds there in Niceville, Florida. Sparks in the Park 850 on Instagram. I've been there. Boots on the ground. Big D Mike the Mayor is going to be there. Trying to kind of work out if I can make it as well. I know it's going to be badass. And we thank the Decorvers for always supporting OLP. And, of course, we got their back. So I think that's all I want to mention at the moment from a show update perspective. So key show updates brought to you by the West Coast Influence. Although we had radar on, we did not mention go to minitruckfilm.com, purchase that Blu-ray or DVD, and you can get a glimpse into the West Coast Influence, which influenced our scene and many of us. It is an official documentary by Radar, financed by Radar, produced by Radar, and uh, it's the West Coast Influence. So, folks, it's minitruckfilm.com. All right, from a OLP perspective, we do have a pre-sale that I believe we're going to launch on Monday. Okay, so this one is very cool. It's been on the list. It's been on my mind for over two years, really even back to my childhood, really, if you technically break it down. But this concept came together. We wanted to maybe have this stuff available for Lone Star, and we just didn't want to push the envelope. So we're going to do a pre-sale here uh, starting next week. So be on the lookout Monday around noon Eastern. Pre-sale is going to go live. And again, we work very closely with Graphic Disorder. Can't thank them enough for the awesome artwork. What I would say is although you know we'll sometimes put three to four, maybe five weeks you know, lead time in those pre-sale order shipping, they often will go much quicker. So we do, generally speaking, seven-day turnaround for the pre-sale. We close it off. We uh, submit the order, we pay, and then we're usually about two, two and a half week lead time from then to to, to pay, or excuse me, to, to, to ship to us, and then of course to turn around and ship out to all of you. So again, we do this podcast totally free. We thank everyone for uh, the support. If you want to turn around and support the cause, you can definitely go out and, and pick up one of these shirts. It's going to be awesome. There's going to be three colors. There's going to be stickers available. There'll eventually be metal signs and some other things, but uh, make sure you check us out. There'll be, of course, skate decks, and we can't talk about skate decks without talking about Joey at Get Decked. Uh, if you look up Get Decked, two words on Facebook or Instagram, you're going to f- uh, find Joey Dilworth's account. And Joey Dilworth can take a skate deck and transform that into an award with said artwork, or he can put your brand onto that skate deck We've seen a lot of shows, including Radar and Lonnie and the cast and characters at Lone Star, jump on board with this concept because many of us grew up, as we've established, in the BMX and or skateboard kind of community. We love this stuff. And who doesn't like hanging a skate deck on your man cave, your woe man cave, you name it. You can even take an individual piece of artwork or photo and work back with Joey. He'll do as low as one order or one deck per order. Of course, we do much more. We're fortunate because of all the support out there. And we've got a lot more stuff in store. But Joey at Get Decked, look him up. Joey Dilworth, he's the man. Great dude. Next week, I promise I'll get back into reading any of the recent uh, reviews. So if you're on an Apple device, whether you're on a computer, you're on an iPad, or most of us, let's face it, are on an iPhone, uh, please, please, please go out uh, and uh, click on Library. Tap on OLP, scroll down, and select the five stars. If nothing else, five-star it. If you can, go above and beyond, write a review, and that is basically where you get to type in, you know, Miggity Mike the Mayor is a bum, and, uh, you know, ODB's the man, you know, whatever you want to say, and we will read those. Now, while I was talking, I did pull up, and it looks like, the last one that we have is love the podcast. OLP is what it's about completely. Uh, let's, uh, you know, let's be enjoy my youth and building minis in the mid eighties uh, to us to kind of rock to OLP. So mini life. And then I know back in December, um, hi from AZ love listening to the podcast every week. Can't wait to see you guys at the next show. Always have a great time. Have a Merry Christmas. So a couple of those, again, I may have missed and I apologize just with everything going on, but uh, we continue to get a lot of support, and uh, what we want to do is get past that 300, that 350 mark this year, 
It's as easy as just tapping the five star, okay, if you're on an iPhone device, iOS device. All right, uh, last but not least, Airhead Nation updates, and uh, do have a few for you, and uh, we'll start with a couple here. One was James uh, Krusenberry, you know, just a real great supporter of the podcast. He says, please keep me in your thoughts and prayers. He's going in for um, some work on his right leg, and, um, you know, he doesn't typically reach out for this kind of stuff. He's a little nervous, so, you know, we're wishing him luck. He's the big homie, and uh, we really appreciate him. I know... uh, we haven't had a chance to link up with Pin, but Pin, it appears, Facebook, you know, Facebook's always right that he's engaged to Jamie. So, uh, Pin, if you hear this, any of the whole big homies hear it, dude, salute, congratulations. We love all the success that you got going on with your life. And uh, next time you talk to Ice T, dog, Tom, I need to get, I got a long box CD, man. Maybe we'll get that shit autographed, cuz. You know how we do, love Ice T. And by the way, it was just his born day as well. Um, this one, Airhead Nation update, Michael Ellard and uh, Lonnie, I believe is how you say her name. Now, there are kinfolk from down south in uh, Australia, and uh, this one's tough. He says, today we come home to find Lexi, their dog, stuck in her bed with no movement in her back legs, 11 years of being his best mate, and it just gives me goosebumps. Um, you know, we see a lot of folks, you know, losing loved ones, including their animals, and, you know, we all know that... Um, you know, loved ones become a part of the family, and that includes our our, our, our furry pets. This one's a big one. Colin Haggy uh, had said a National Honor Society inductee. So Colin and his uh, his pops, you know, uh, congratulations and love to see all the success. Hopefully, we'll link up soon. I, I know, um, you know, we date. You know, you, you got the truck here in our booth at Mini Nats, and we're excited to see kind of the future and what you got going on. This one was one that uh, Solomon had had sent to me, and he says, uh, with heaviest hearts, I inform everyone that my boy Ross Nichols from Jack's Speed Shop has grown his wings and is now doing burnout in heaven. And I tell you, man, we lost. There was an NC guy that Chad had just asked for prayers about, and then within like a day or two, he had passed away. Uh, you know, I believe it was cancer related, and um, you know now you know this big homie. So. We're losing a lot of kinfolk, and like we always preach here, you know, try to uh, just stay positive and have fun in life because it's definitely short. We want to thank Hammered Weekend Wear, H A M M E R D, weekendwear.com for support scene or for sponsoring the Airhead Nation updates. We certainly appreciate them. In, in fact, I just saw Ron Perkins mention that the Hammered Weekend Wear store is going to be closed for about two weeks. As he gallivants down to Conroe, Texas, please, if you can, come by the booth, Hammered Weekend Wear. He's going to be in the same spot, and he loves seeing everyone. That basically means that all the orders online are going to be shut down. Ron's on his uh, on the rise with the weight loss, so congratulations, homie. And we can't wait to hang out in Conroe. Again, go out and support the real deal. Ron ticks those, um, those miles over on the odometer. H A M M E R D, we can wear.com, and uh, the store will be back up on March 3rd when he does the two new drops. So, you know the routine there. All right, I've said way too much. We're going to roll in now to the audio with the big homie. And I tell you what, man, it was a lot of fun. We can't uh, thank him enough. And when I think of Shane Andrews, I think of a great dude in the scene, and you'll get a chance to hear some of his amazing stories. Stick with us. Stay on the rise. Be safe. And hopefully we'll see many of you next week in Conroe. Hopefully, God willing, we'll have a new episode next week. Yeah, you. Yo, yo, as I mentioned with Miggity Mike, the mayor, earlier, we're definitely excited. I'm super excited. Shane Andrews finally getting a chance to sit down with the big homie, slapped hands at all kinds of different shows from Scraping the Coast, Southern Tradition, you name it. This guy's boots on the ground. Shane, thank you so much for taking the time to sit down with the OLP. Definitely, man. It's good talking to you. Yeah, man. I always enjoy linking up with you, man. And and I do want to say, I know the other day I saw that it was the anniversary, I think the fourth anniversary of your dad's passing, Jeff Davis Andrews yes, the second on on the February 11th. I know it's not easy, brother. So may he rest in peace. 
I appreciate it, man. I definitely appreciate it. Yeah, 1,000, brother. Talk to us a little bit about, you know, the folks that come here all the time and listen and, and you know, any new guests. We always like to kind of, or excuse me, any new listeners, always like to kind of start off with a little bit. Can you give a little bit of background about yourself, maybe where you grew up, and kind of a little bit about uh, who Shane Andrews is? Yeah, so, uh, you know, I was born in Portsmouth, Virginia. My dad was in the Navy. You know, he played football at Auburn University. Okay. And, uh so he also wrestled at Auburn University, and then he decided my mom ended up getting pregnant, so he decided, okay, look, you know, I can't really pay bills if I'm in college, so he went ahead and left college and joined the Navy. Wow. So, you know, we pretty much traveled all over the place, you know, being a military kid, you travel all over God's creation, and finally, we settled down in Maryland when I was in elementary school. So I pretty much grew up in Maryland, in Southern Maryland. Okay. Yep. So, you know, you growing up there, you know, we've had some guests on from there. We're going to have some more that we've got on the list from that area. You know, you kind of fast forward from growing up there, you know, what was the bug? I mean, I don't know in that particular area, if there was many trucks and stuff, like what, what kind of brought you into at least, you know, the, the automotive scene. Was there any one thing that kind of sparked before you ended up getting the current truck that we'll talk about? Well, you know, growing up, I grew up in the 90s, you know, so I graduated high school back in 95. So that's when, you know, low riders, the mini truck scene was, you know, kind of starting to take off a little bit. So my first truck was actually a uh, Toyota, you know, the stick shift, base model, roll down windows, no air conditioning. And of course, you know, you just throw the blocks on the back, <laughs> drop it down on the torsion bars and all that the old school stuff, the static. Yeah. Yep, yep. So that's how I first, you know, got into you know, the mini truck scene and everything. It was like the old school way. So that's originally how I had started off. Yep. Now, when you and I have talked, you, you have mentioned to me that, you know, not only did you lose your pops, rest in peace to him, but your brother-in-law as well, uh, he had passed away. Um, talk to us about how you acquired this, this Nissan Frontier that you own. So my brother-in-law, he had served four tours over between Iraq and Afghanistan. And, uh, you know, I was living in Kentucky at the time, recovering from knee surgery, and I was helping my sister out while, you know, he was over in Iraq and Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. So he always promised, you know, made me promise if something happened to him, you know, take care of the kids. So he actually got blown up in a Humvee and had a severe head injury. Came back home and never told anybody, didn't tell me, didn't tell my sister, nobody. So he had just dropped my nephew off and was, well, he had told me about the seizures, but he just kind of said, you know, I'm having problems at work, staying awake. He said, I had to move my chair out of my office because I kept, you know, falling asleep. He didn't say that he had seizures, just said he was falling asleep. So we didn't think anything of it. And he had a seizure one day at work. So my sister, you know, rushed up to the hospital. They told him no more driving. Well, my nephew wanted to go somewhere. So, of course, he took him, got behind the wheel, ended up having a seizure and driving through a building and passing away. And how long ago was this, homie? That was a year before my dad had passed. Him and my dad passed. My dad passed, um, I think it was a couple of days, a year and a couple of days after my brother-in-law had passed. And it was weird because I remember having a conversation with my dad because me and my dad were kind of like the Paul Bears hold my because they're they're both buried at the National Cemetery in uh, Kentucky. Wow. So me and my dad were walking, and my dad originally wanted to be buried in Georgia, but I remember him and me having a conversation, and he loved the service and said, you know, this is where I would really like getting buried. And never did I think a year later I'd be burying my dad after having that conversation man, dude, I'm sorry. And, you know, we just got to give a nod to them for their military service. I mean, you know, some people do four years, you know, some people do much longer. Um, you know, some of us, you know, can't even give that much. And, and for someone like both of them to be able to give so much, man, you know, um, you know, salute to those guys, man. Right. And how I came about the truck was my nephew was 15 at the time. And, you know, he, I, I let him drive my charger around to take his mind off of his father passing. Mm-hmm. So I came to my sister and I said, look, you know, cause it was a bone stock truck, you know, it looked like a farm truck, mm-hmm. had the, you know, aluminum wheels, 
nothing to roll down windows. I mean, it was bone stock. So I said, Hey, you know, let him take my charger and I will take Rick's truck. Uh, so that's is, how this I, is after he passed. Cause like you said, it right, was kind of getting his right, mind off of it. Right. Right. After he passed. So she ended up keeping the charger and I ended up, you know, taking my brother-in-law's truck. Cause I had a vision. I was like, you know what? I want to build something out of it. I want to get back into mini truck scene and I want to build something. Mm-hmm. So that was how a way, I acquired it. And it was a way also for you to kind of give a nod to your brother-in-law, man. Correct. Correct. To keep it in the family. Yep. And that way, you know, his kids could go, you know what? That's my dad's truck. Well, talk to us about this. So like you acquired the truck, right? And what I've always been curious about, I love the stories behind it. So obviously like, you know, rest in peace to your brother-in-law and your pops, you acquired this truck, kind of trade it. And, you know, it's a good thing for both of you, right? Based upon where you're at in life at that point, did you right. immediately start going, Hey, you know, being that you've, you've got the bug from the mini truck scene, did you immediately start going, hey, I'm going to do this and do that? Like, how did that that snowball? I effect? did. I kind of had a vision. As soon as I got it, I was like, all right, well, the first thing I need to get is I need to get rims. Because like I said, it had the old aluminum ones. Yep. And then I was looking because it was a Nissan Frontier. And I was like, you know, I kept talking to people. And nobody had done air ride, you know, on the newer versions. Yep. So I went ahead and talked to one of my sponsors, which is X2 Industries. And I got them to send me out some coilovers, and then I flipped the leaf springs in the back. Okay. So, you know, kind of just did like a static drop deal. Got it. So that's how we, you know, originally lowered it. And I remember my first show that I went to was uh, Slamming and Jamming when they had it in Sevierville. Yeah. So that was the first show, you know, where I got the bug and ended up getting in the stereo competition because I had a good friend of mine that uh he was always about you know getting cheap boxes and stereos and i kept telling him you know you get what you pay for you pay for cheap you know you're gonna get cheap Mm -hmm. so i went up and i had a box built at the stereo shop and stuff and i had two 10 inch memphis mojos and we ended up doing the stereo competition (laughs) he had two 12 inch memphis mojos and i ended up beating hell yeah that's back in the day man it was, it was. So that's when I got the bug, and I was like, fell in love with car shows, and I was like, all right, this is what I want to do, and that's when I just started progressively building and building and building. Yeah, that's sick, man. Now, I've seen you at shows, right, and, and it seems like, like you said, building and building and building, there's always kind of new stuff coming, right? Talk to us about yep. some of the things that you ended up doing to you know to the truck over the course of you know the, the last few years. So originally, I, when I first lowered it, you know, I ended up getting a wrap on it. That was the first thing. You know, if you look on my Instagram, it's Anchor's Way. You can see it originally had a skull wrap on it. Okay. So, you know, that was one of the things. Then I decided to put the camper shell on it. Then I did a blow through box. Then I found a shop down in Georgia that was like, yeah, we can do the air ride. So I was like, all right, well, I'm going to do the air ride. So originally, took it down there. I did the air ride, and once you get on it, you start going to shows, and you get addicted, and you look at other people's stuff, and that's when you start going, "Man, I really like what this guy's done." You respect everybody's yes. building, you see, and you're like, "I like what this guy's done." You know, maybe I can get something like that, and you just take notes, and you're like, "I really like what this guy has. I think I can step it up a notch." Yep. Yeah, it's that friendly competition where. You see someone, you're like, damn, they're a little lower. Oh, man, they've got some graphics. I'm going to do some stuff. Exactly. Yeah, we heard that from Mike Collins even, you know, back when we had him on recently talking about the 80s and the 90s. You know, you, it was like a pride thing, too, because you're like, well, damn, dude, you know, I'm second. You know, how can I go back and flip the script and come back maybe first next time? Right. And that, that's what I said when you go to shows, because there's a lot of times when my truck was down and I still went to shows because I wanted to see what was out there, yep. you know, and you're always like, you, you look at, okay, well, what's a new type of billet wheels out? You know, what can I get? How deep are the lips? You're always looking at other people's builds and taking notes. And that that's what I always did. I would always just go to the shows and I'd look at other people's stuff and be like, you know what? I really like what he has. And you kind of like Mitch Mash, you're like, I like this guy's truck. I like the other guy's truck. I'm going to kind of go somewhere in between what they have going on. Yep. Yeah, definitely. And like, for instance, I remember now I didn't get a chance to go last year. I love Waka show, Southern tradition, 
always in the month of July. I know that he's been out there, boots on the ground, got a chance to see him recently too. I always love linking up with Waka, right? But that was an example of a show where like you're parked there and I come up and I see your truck and I'm like, man, this is a clean, super clean build. You know, it's it's a fun truck. It's uh, it's something that you can drive and you can enjoy. So, I mean, obviously you've been enjoying it the last few years, you know, going to shows. Right. Yeah. So talk to us about, right, so here's the big thing, right, this big reveal. You know, you posted it on social media, but ironically enough how life sometimes is, you know, is ironic or weird with dates. You know, you're celebrating your dad's anniversary of his passing, you know, not – you're recognizing the anniversary of your dad's passing, you know, four years ago, and you get a call. Talk to us a little bit about, um, before we get to that, right, I want to leave that cliffhanger. How did this recent uh, rebuild manifest, right? Because, I mean, you have literally blown this truck apart. I mean, we we just, like, gutted the truck. Me, my sister, my brother, you know, my mom, we've all just, you know, it, it, it came, you know, intuition when we were at Battle of Bama, when, you know, the COVID, when it had shut down all the shows. So Battle of Bama was huge, remember, because all the shows had shut down and yep. everybody went to that show because you had many nats that got canceled. So Battle of Bama was probably, what, double, triple that year? Yeah, yeah. It, it was huge. So my sister was like, look, this truck, even though it's my husband's truck, it's got, you know, my dad's iPad in it, which had his playlist on it, because my dad was a huge music guy. Okay. You know, he liked Journey, Van Halen, you know, the Cars, you know, Def Leppard. He liked all that. And, I mean, he had earphones and all the time jamming music. So it had his iPad with his playlist. And she kept saying, you know, well, really, it's not a tribute truck because there's no military representation. And when you're around that on the Bama, you know, you're seeing the battleships and all that. She said, I want to do redo the truck and let's do it, you know, for dad and Rick. So she actually got online at Battle the Bama and she found the painter, Mickey Harris, and was like, emailed him. And he emailed her back, you know, after the show. And he was like, hey, I'm all on board. Let's do it. And I literally because you saw the build, you know, I, I started painting. Painted a little more, painted a little more. And I just got done painting the truck. And I was like, oh, my God, I just spent, you know, $8,500 painting the truck. Now we're going to sand it all down. Wow. So that that's how you know, it came into tuition of, you know, we're going to redo the truck and we're going to do it military-wise because it started at the show Battle in the Bama. Yeah, so talk to us a little bit about this because, you know, you mentioned your sister finds this painter, Okay. Mm -hmm. Do you go into this mentally going, hey, you know, because here, here, okay, hear me out on this. One of the most iconic themed vehicles, trucks, right, in our truck scene is Plain Jane, right? We all know that. Like, right. You think of, you know, when I think of like OCC Chopper and you think of like a theme bike, whether, whether you like to those bikes or not, like their theming, how they did it throughout was, was pretty insane. So I think of like Plain Jane as like, wow, this thing was really themed like, this this bare bones kind of military old you know old school plane right do you uh, go into this refresh this rebuild going hey we're going to do a tribute like how does that manifest yeah we went in it, it was exactly a tribute you know we we wanted to go in for a tribute for my dad and my brother-in-law you know and we also wanted because that was when you know the kneeling for the national anthem you know and, and the world was just you know at odds. Everybody hated everybody. Then you had COVID going on. So, I mean, everybody was just miserable, you know. So, we were like, well, let's do something nice, you know. The military's really not, you know, they're kind of getting shafted. So, we were like, let's do a tribute bill for my, bro my brother-in-law and my dad, and let's also respect, you know, all the military troops that have fought for this country. Dude, I mean, there's, there's no greater thing you can do to show respect to me Though in showing respect, you know, to the military and or a loved one, dude. And and I salute you yep. for that, bro. I really do, man. So that, and that and that's what this truck was all about. You know, it was it was about showing love for the people that fought for this country, that gave them the freedom. And and, you know, that that's strictly what this truck was about, my brother in law, my dad, and for the military troops. We wanted to show appreciation to them and the sacrifice they have made and the loved ones that are lost. 
yeah, and I would encourage people, listen, you know, no matter what you believe in this world, to me, you know, the folks that sign up, you know, you go back to the, the infancy of our of our country, these folks that sign up, and a lot of them, you know, especially over the years, you know, they knew they were going into battles and that they weren't going to come home, right? Storming yep. the beaches of Normandy and things like that. And you think about, you know, what people do, right? And they, and they sacrifice everything, right, potentially, or many times, oftentimes, they, they sacrifice everything and they give everything. So I'm very pro-military. I think it's I think it's it's just a thing that is it, it's a great outlet for many people. But for people like your family that have given so much, you know, again, I can't say enough respect. And it's crazy because the the painter did not even you know really know my dad and brother in law, but the ship that he put on the hood of the truck is actually a ship that my dad because he was an ice forecaster. It was a ship that my dad used to forecast to go through there, you know, to get around the ice and everything. It was a ship that he worked for before. So, and, and the painter had no idea about that. Wow. Not a clue. So when we saw it, you know, it was like, oh my God, it gave you even, Goosebumps. you know, more chills. Yeah. And then yeah. the painter had this idea of, he was like, hey, I want to do this trip, but I want to tell a story. Let's start from the beginning of when the military began and let's end with the Navy SEALs. So that's what he did. The whole truck, if you go around it, it tells the whole story about how the truck was uh, designed and painted. So in the back, there's a TV that comes up, and on the TV, it's going to be a video playing, telling you about, you know, the whole truck, why it was built, and the story behind each scene that's painted on the side of the truck. It's truly mind-blowing. When Back in December, you had posted a photo, and I saw the tailgate of it. You know, you got the kind of the cat old school term Cali combo, right? It's all shaved up. And on the right side, you know, you see this ship, right? And you see these planes and you see this, the water and, you know, the the sea foam and and just all of that, right? It's, I don't even know if I should call it a mural. I guess, you know, graphics, a mural. Like it is, it's mind blowing to me the, the talent that people have. But dude, like then you see the planes on the right side of the bed I mean, dude, it's the story that I think it's going to tell. It's gonna, I think it's going to move a lot of people, man. Yeah. I mean, that was the whole purpose, you know, that we, that we built it, you know. It wasn't, we never really built it, you know, about trophies or anything. This truck was strictly built to honor my dad, my brother-in-law, and like I said, the military people. We didn't build it going after like, you know, hey, we're going out there. We want to win this trophy, that trophy. Yeah. You know, and we, we sat there and said, you know, at the end of the day, we don't want anything. It doesn't matter to us. You know, right. this is strictly to honor our loved ones. Dude, I commend you for it. The the thing, it, it may not have sat in, you know, set into your mind yet. You know, obviously a lot of this is going to play out over the course of time of getting the truck back. But I think you're going to be able to bridge the gap because, you know, a lot of folks probably look at many trucks and they go, oh, look at these stupid low trucks. You know, we've all heard the stupid, you know, negativity and stuff. But... You know, you're you're showing that hey, I could take you know one of these mini trucks, and we could take it to a different level to be able to get people that maybe wouldn't typically look at a mini truck, walk over, right. cross their hands, or cross their arms, and kind of look and go, "Wow, man, th- they've really done something." And you, and you know, imagine how many conversations it's going to spark. Like, hey, why'd you do right. it? Hey, is this a tribute to someone? I mean, dude, you've got a, 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 an endless amount of conversations coming to be able to talk about your brother-in-law and your pops. Well, and the best thing about the bill was the day that we got the phone call on the you know four-year anniversary after my dad passed, and I'm saying that the military actually wanted the truck. Dude. Yeah, you know, so the painter calls and says, you know, hey, don't make any more show plans because the Navy wants the truck. Yeah, talk to us about that, right? So that was a little bit of the cliffhanger. What I want to kind of know is... Do you think, based upon your knowledge of what how that came about, you know, do they see it in social media? Does he maybe know someone and they see it and they go, "Wow, like what is this? Okay. Like we want to promote, we want to promote it." Right. So Mickey, the airbrush artist, he actually used to work for the Pentagon. Wow. That's where he worked at. So he used to paint whenever they needed like paintings of like war scenes that actually happened, like when they had. When all those Navy SEALs got killed, the most Navy SEALs got killed. I can't remember what it was. He, he actually painted Marcus Luttrell's car, the only survivor, you know, where all those Navy SEALs died. He painted his Dodge Viper. 
He painted a car for Jay Leno. He painted Pat Tillman's car, oh, and he wow. did a SEMA. Yeah, he did a SEMA build where uh, all these people, I guess, received the what is it, purple heart, wow. and uh, you know he painted their dog tags on it and all that. I mean, so the guy's like, at, you know, astronomical, and I guess you know he's got a large following for the military and stuff like that. So Dude, I don't know exactly who that's, had that's awesome. called. Yeah, who had called him or seen it, but he just called and said, hey, look, don't make any more show plans. He said, because, you know, at the end of, I think Battle Man was what, May? Yes. Yes. So at the end of May, he was saying, you know, look, the Navy wants it. So I think I have to haul it from Battle over to uh, Northfield, Virginia, and then they're going to put it on a military boat and they're going to ship it up to New York. And I'm not sure how long it's going to stay in New York. And then they want to ship it from New York on another Navy ship and take it out to uh, San Diego, California. Wow. Which, you know, that gave us all chills. You know, it's like you build this truck and it was like we wanted to show it for a year. But then, you know, when the military called, like I sent you the text message when I, you know, talked to the painter and I said, hey, look, you know, that's where the truck belongs. It actually belongs with the Navy. You know, rather than me taking it to shows because yeah, that's where my dad, my brother, and they'd rather be. They'd rather be sailing around with other veterans. A hundred percent. And the Navy logo is painted on the roof of the truck, right? On the roof of the truck. Yeah, and and like the bomb themes and things like that inside the bed. I mean, you guys are. You're not just going, hey, we're going to paint murals, right? I mean, the full interior, you're talking the, the, the bomb casings and stuff. I mean, dude, it's the theme is un- insane, dude. Like, even around the yeah, battery, so you know, you've got the big the battery, bullets. we got 40-caliber bullets wrapped around the battery. It's got three batteries, and it's got 40-caliber bullets wrapped around the uh, batteries. It's got a bomb that was an air tank that, you know, the guy, Eric, turned into, uh, at Southern Customs, he turned into a uh, bomb where the Bombay doors open, and it actually sounds like Bombay doors opening. And uh, the batteries come out, the TV comes out, and it tells the story. And then my sister decided, hey, on the inside, let's turn it into an airplane. So they make a Grumman airplane, which is a Navy plane. So we have two yoke steering wheels because you have, you know, two pilots in that plane. So there's one on the driver's side, there's one on the passenger side. And wow. actually, all the gauges that are in the truck now are airplane gauges. There's not any truck gauges in there anymore. It's all airplane gauges. Dude. Uh, it's actually got a radar that's in there, you know, and all these gauges came off of the Roman well, airplane. It doesn't have a gas pedal anymore. It actually has an airplane throttle to, you know, well, I put it all- into uh, gear. Yeah, I mean, this with all due respect, I mean, does it have a flux capacitor at this point? I'm going, dude, it's got everything, brother. I love it, man. <laughs> yeah, I know. You know, and I know some people are probably going to be like, ah, oh, you know, he went kind of way over the top no, for it. But, man. you know, at the end of the There's day, no we were way. like, you know what? We were like, this is a tribute. You know, we, we don't care, you know. Dude, if somebody what says that, is. they're getting knocked out, man. You know what I mean? I mean, dude, this is it, – it's truly – it's something that's going to be hard to kind of maybe explain, but I think when people see some of the photos, I mean, you can follow Shane Andrews on Facebook, uh, just how it sounds. Um, and then give out your Instagram again one more time. It is A W E I G H away. That's right. A W. Yeah. So it's anchors, A N C H O R S yep. away 1515. And you'll see, this is a military, a tribute truck to honor uh, my father and my brother-in-law. Uh, who were Navy veterans, as he as he's mentioned, and he's got all the photos, and and we're gonna share a bunch of them. To me, it, it's great because when you think of you know we we've seen themed vehicles. Don't get me wrong, we've seen themed motorcycles, but in the mini truck community, that's one of the coolest things that if you're into something, um, or in this case, you know, a tribute for the military to your family as well. It's so awesome that you can pull all these parts and resources and the paint and all these things, and it's really going to just come out to me like a vehicle that's going to stand the test of time to say, dude, I remember that, much like many of us remember Plain Jane. Right. And it was weird because, you know, we just, you know, it all fell into place. Like, my sister had the hugest part because she found all the plane parts, you know, for the interior and everything, and we've had a great build team from Eric at Southern Customs to... 
you know, Mickey Altmino, South Dakota, to Shannon Humboldt, which is the body shop guy. I mean, we, we couldn't ask for a better build team on this truck, you know. It was our vision, and then they put everything together. Yeah, and I can't stress this enough. You know, some of us have been a part of big builds like this, and it trips me out sometimes when, you know, the these guys, right, and these ladies and your family and stuff, many of you have can, have have given a lot, right? You know, your time, your resources, you know, some have given – you know, more than others, right? Because that's it always happens that way. But what blows my mind is, you know, sometimes you'll have, you know, this this truck has this huge opportunity, but then you'll have some people that that um, you know might be a part of a build and then they don't contribute or they fall flat. And and I try to encourage people like if if you can be a part of something like this, give the extra effort. You know, you might not be able to bill every single hour, or you may not be able to. Uh, charge every single, you know, down to that one last cent. But I'm telling you, when you know a truck is going to be bigger than kind of the scene itself, right? It's going to take on its own persona. You know, give the extra effort. Do the work right, you know. You know, yeah. get it done. Do what you say you're going to do because to me, that's that's the utmost importance, man. And a lot of us have been on the bad side of deals, you know, this and that. You know, some of us have in the scene. Um, but someone like yourself right now, you're, you're riding cloud nine. Uh, you know, you're probably thinking of your brother-in-law and your pops. And, and I just know I could tell in the excitement, uh, Shane, that you're just excited, bro. Oh, I'm ecstatic. I mean, I, you know, I can't wait to get out there and see it, you know, this week, like the painter, you know, the body shop guy, he just sent me a video of the LS motor running and which is cool because the LS motor that we have in there, how you fire it up, you don't fire it up with keys, you fire it up with, you know, airplane gauges. <laughs> wow. So, yeah. I mean everything that's been done to it, it, it looks like just like an airplane. And a lot of people are gonna miss like some of the small stuff, like the aluminum bed pan back there, it's actually got airplane rivets all the way around. You know, the whole thing, even the battery cases, airplane rivets. If you look in my uh, dash, it's airplane rivets. If you look in the grill, airplane rivets, everything on it, it looks identical to an airplane. We did the doors, you know, on the inside, airplane rivets. And he went in there and airbrushed it and rusted it out so it looked like a plane that had been sitting on the deck for a while. I mean, it's just the small details would just blow you away. I think it's one of the trucks that, you know, you're going to go. Man, I didn't realize that was on there when I saw it last time. Yeah, and 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 that's the thing when you use your imagination and you do things for the passion of it. You know, I see people all the time battling over oh my graphics and Cali this and that, and, and you know we all love that stuff. But I remind people, even for myself, I got to remind myself it's okay to think outside the box. And something like this may not be your typical truck or may not be your typical you know graphic job, but to me. It's up. It's going to be up there with some of the greatest of all time, dude. Well, I appreciate it. You know, and it's crazy because, thank God, like you were talking about, you know, everybody helping out, pitching in and stuff like that. I mean, luckily, I've had some great sponsors pitch in and help me out with this build. And some you of those that have gave me. I have MTX, you know. I have XK Glow, X2 Industries. I have, oh, God, Premier Wheel. All one brake concepts. I'm trying to throw them all out there. I'd said XK Glow, X2 Industries. What about paint? I'm trying what to about paint ones. itself? The paint, Mickey Harris, he's, he's hooked us up. Shannon Humboldt, he's hooked us up. Eric over at Southern Customs, he's hooked us up. I mean, Alexani Wheels, they gave me a great deal. Good. You know, I've, I've got about 10 or 11, and I mean, thank God for them because, you know, <laughs> if you didn't have them, your bill would be, you know, 10 times higher. The engine guy that put my engine in, he gave me a great deal on the LS. I mean, fabulous deal on the LS. Yep. You well, know. And, and, you know, and so many of us over the years have maybe wanted to sponsor here and there, and you don't always, you know, realize it comes with, you know, a lot of weight on your shoulders, right? Depending on if it's just a regular kind of bill right. and that type of thing. But to me, companies shouldn't even have to think twice. Now, granted, you got some smaller businesses that may not have as much bandwidth to go, hey, yeah, sure, we can paint your whole vehicle. But I love right. seeing companies step up. You know, years ago, I talked about when they had the, the fires in California and, like, Toyota had stepped up and there was the guy that had rescued some people and, and there was a whole story behind the Toyota. Yeah, I think I remember that. Yeah. yeah, and Toyota goes, hey, we're going to give that guy a truck. I think it was a Toyota. And yep. I thought to myself... Like, dude, that's the good that I love to see. You know what I mean? There might be a guy yeah. out there that just wants one, 
But, dude, there's a good reason out there sometimes to go, dude, we're a multi-billion dollar company. Let's expense it. And, you know, I've used, I have an MTX amp in my truck that I've had, you know, for over 20 years and the thing's still thriving. And I just love to hear when companies, you know, step up, Shane, and, and, and do those kind of things, bro. Right. And that's one thing I've always had. I've had people ask me, you know, well, how do you get the sponsors? And, I, you know, me, I'm the most down-to-earth guy. You ask me a question, I'm going to tell you. And I tell them, look, this is how you go about the proposal. You know, I, I help them out and I work their way through it. And I'm like, you want sponsors? I will help you, you know, out the best yep. I can. Yep. Yep. Yeah. I'm definitely. always one willing to help, you know. Yeah. And if my, somebody needs it. Yeah. My feedback to people is to remember, you know, it's not as easy because, you know, you also have, you know, you need to get the exposure and stuff. And, you know, when you yep. got the phone call and, you know, you find out that it's going to potentially make this. You know, whether you want to look at it as a world tour potentially or, you know, throughout the country. I mean, damn, on a ship. I mean, how many how many minis have went on a ship? Not not to be sold overseas, but you right. know, to go to another destination in the country. You just gotta think sometimes do you do you wonder like you have to pinch yourself, so to speak, and go, Man, when we went into this a couple years ago and we said we're gonna re we're gonna rebuild this, right? Did you ever think, right, for a moment that you could get to I mean, this is a pretty awesome level, brother. No, nah, I mean, honestly, we never thought of it. We thought, you know, okay, we're going to show it. And, you know, we talked about, okay, well, what are we going to do, you know, when we're done showing it, you know, are we just going to, because, you know, the kids, I didn't think my son was going to show it. I didn't think hers. And it's like, you know, well, what are you going to do with it? Are you just going to store it somewhere? What are you going to do with it when you're done showing it? And we thought, okay, well, we'll see if, you know, the museum at Battle of the Bama wanted it and they could just keep it in there. You know, we thought, talked about doing that. You know, and then we thought, well, maybe, you know, we'll roll it across the auction block or something and let people bid on it. Because there's, you know, people that just collect cars. Sure. And, you know, you got a guy by the name Mickey Harris that paints where, you know, a lot of the older generation knows him and they want cars painted by him. But then when we got the call about, you know, the Navy, you know, wanting to take it, we were like, whoa. You know, this is where the truck belongs. This is, you know, what we want. And that's when we said, okay, well, if it's just one show that we go to you, you know, this year, it is what it is. You know, because that that's when we're like, this is where the truck belongs, in all honesty. It, you know, and how many, like you said, you don't get that opportunity twice to sit there and say, hey, my truck's floating out in the middle of the sea on a military ship. You know, yeah. you don't you don't get that opportunity. Yeah, you don't, and I, I do think that you, you have an opportunity to maybe do even more down the road if you said, hey, we're going to do another build, or, you know, you, you know, there's a lot of companies out there that, that budget some money, and they go, hey, well, we might want to buy this and put it into our showroom, or our this, or right. that, so, you know, I, I do think um, there are opportunities for you, and, you know, I'd love to see you be able to, you know, continue doing some of these type of things if you can, but... You know, obviously, let's not put the cart before the horse. I want to see you get through this one because, as anybody knows, that's built something that's kind of high caliber, taking it to multiple states away. You know, dealing with sponsors, uh, and then now the U.S. military putting their thumb, going, "Hey, we want this under our wing. We want to be able to promote it some, so to speak." Um, it's just a great feeling. One of my good friends, Noldy Rodriguez the Third. You know, he was in the military for four years back in the '90s, the Navy, to, to be exact. And I just think of all the great uh, men and women that have given so much, whether they were able to, to kind of come out of the service and, 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 and live a, a normal civilian life or right. know, they paid the, the ultimate sacrifice. But, I mean, I, dude, I, I don't know any other way to say, man, I, I salute you for what you're doing, Shane Andrews. I, I definitely appreciate it, man. And like I said, that, that, that's what the dude was about. We never you know, sat there and said, ah, oh, well, you know, we're going after trophies. We're going to build this extravagant truck. It was all about, you know, we wanted something that a veteran could come to a show to and sit there and go, man, you know, I'm proud to see that somebody saluting the military. And that was the whole purpose of this build Dude. was, you know, to honor, you know, people of the military for them to have something to look at at a show, you know, That's besides awesome. something with just, you know, graphics and stuff. It was strictly to salute them for them to have something to, you know, honor them at a show. Yeah. I love it, man. I really do. And, and I just want to kind of ask you, man, I mean, you, you've you been able to plug some great companies, and I thank you for doing that. Um, you know, as we kind of wrap it up, I and mean, we talked about how you got in the scene, we talked about this uh, amazing truck and the tribute, but, I mean, any last words for everyone? 
you know, I just want people to, you know, keep striving, you know, and your dreams will come true. You know, if you keep pushing and pushing and, you know, don't stop, build what you want to build, no matter what anybody says, build what you want to build, you know, if, and, and keep pushing, don't stop. You know, it's going to take time. Like I tell a lot of my friends, it doesn't happen overnight. Nothing's going to happen overnight. You know, keep striving, keep going. If, if you need sponsors, you know, keep going. Yeah, you're going to have some that turn you down, you know, but you're going to have a couple that tells you, yes, you know, keep pushing 100%. and you will get there. You know, just don't don't stop at your dreams. I hate people that, you know, stop, start a build, you know, and then they're like, ah, well, you know, I, I'm just going to stop. If you got to put it up for a year, put it up for a year. Keep pushing. You know, it will happen. And I tell people that all the time. My truck's been doing two years. You know, it will happen. It's not going to happen overnight. Be patient. You know, I love and then that's what I love doing. I love going to shows and I love seeing everybody's doing. Even if it's not something that I like, you know, you can respect I like it. going. Yeah. I, and I can respect it and I will look at it, you know, because you know, we all have our different ways of doing things. And that's what makes the mini truck scene the best is because you're not looking at the same vehicle. If you go to a show and you look at the same vehicle, you kind of get bored. You know, well, and I like all the classes, you know, I like going to look at the owner construction because I like looking at him going, you know, what is that going to look like when he finishes it? You know, I love the under construction stuff because, like I said, you know, it's people starting their build and I'm sitting there going, I'm trying to picture in my mind. What is it going to look like yeah, when they finish? Can, it's a canvas. It is. And you exactly. Know, we're talking to Shane Andrews on Facebook back on November 14th. He posted everyone is always complaining about trailering or can't compete. With $100,000 builds, you know, who cares if you drive it, trailer it, drag it? At the end of the day, it's about hanging with friends and enjoying the shows and respecting everyone's build. And Shane, I couldn't, I couldn't have said it better. And I think that's so important. You know, I always tell people, don't, you know, don't worry about what other people are doing. You know, like if somebody goes, well, I'm going to do a burnout, you know, don't do it at a show. But, you know, who cares? Let them do it. If somebody goes, hey, I'm going to lift my truck great you know if <laughs> well we're never going to want anyone to dance on your hood but i tell the people the same thing the super bowl hey is it crazy I'm, 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 freaking out. <laughs> I'm like dude i'm like just i mean hey teach their own i mean some people do yep. some weird shit i wouldn't really do it but you know to me shane uh, we, we slap hands all the time you hit so many yes, shows sir. and I'm, I'm excited for your uh, future your family's future, all of the hands and talented folks that are a part of your build. Uh, I would highly encourage people, Shane Andrews, go follow him on Facebook. And uh, it's anchors underscore away, but it's A-W-E-I-G-H 1515 on Instagram. And believe me, this truck is going to be one that we're talking about years down the road. I salute you, brother. I appreciate it, brother. And, you know, it's always good talking to you and hanging out with you at shows, man. I love, always enjoy seeing you. Yeah, I love your passion, bro. And if there's one guy that's on the rise, you live it 24-7, and I appreciate you, Shane. Hey, man, like I said, I, I love going and hanging out with everybody and trying, you know, to push them. And like I said, you know, I hope nobody out there, you know, goes up. That's why I said, if you trail it, trail it, you drag it, you drag it. At the end of the day, it's your truck. Enjoy it. <laughs> enjoy it however you want to enjoy it. You know, if you want to park it in the garage and look at it, enjoy it. R you know, and don't let the naysayers get you down. If they don't like what you're doing, keep doing it. Brother, hey, we need you as, like, the spokesperson for OLP, man. You're positive. You're living the dream. You're doing what you want to do. You're honoring veterans, including your family. Uh, dude, straight up and down. And I'm going to tell respect. you what, what made me the way that I am and, and so positive. And, like, you never know when your numbers pull because, like I said, my dad was fine. The year ago, before we buried my brother-in-law, fine. We were talking, we were joking. Then all of a sudden, a year later, he's passed away. You never know when your number's going to call, and you don't want to be that guy to be remembered as the negative person, always putting people down. You want to be known as the fun guy that everybody, you know, enjoys hanging around and seeing. Life is short. You never know when your number's going to call. Stay positive and keep doing you, dude. Well said, and I'll tell you this last comment for me. When Bob Saget recently passed away, you know, they announced that, you know, it was just a fall that, that he had, and then he must have went to sleep, not thinking anything of it. You know, it wasn't drugs. It wasn't alcohol. It wasn't any, you know, kind of stuff like that. But everybody said, like, the guy never said a bad thing about other people. 
And yeah. he, he was a positive guy. Everyone loved him. You know, he's a funny guy. Never got to see his sets, but we all know that, you know, he there was the America's Funniest Video. There was the Full House, and then there was the real Bob Saget on stage, right? He was really funny. Yeah. But and he was a great comedian. Yeah, he was. And, 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 and I know, like I've said this before, you know, I tell people, bury the beefs, get out there, slap hands, even with people that, for whatever reason, maybe you don't like them because of, you know, some stupid little thing from 20 years ago or 10 years ago. Life is too short. Be positive. Get out there. Do the right thing. And just remember, when you think you're having a bad day or you've got, you, you know, you're backed into a bad situation, dude, there's people I know. Um, there's somebody out there even worse off. Yeah, someone that's lost a loved one. You know, Dick Vitale, yeah. uh, you know, the legend, he's going through, uh, you know, the, the, the surgery, you know, with his vocal cords and stuff. And, you know, there's people that want to do more and they can't because of a, an ailment or, or health things. But, you know, be positive. I know it's like, it sounds like we're beating the dead horse, but do it. You'll feel better in life. You'll go to sleep. You'll rest easier. And uh, you'll get up right. the next day. Well, I mean, that's like me. I battle. I have epilepsy that I battle, you know, on a daily basis and stuff. And every day I, you know, get up because my mom's always like, you know, how can somebody have so many problems like you, you know, stay positive? And again, you never know when that number's going to be called, you know, because I had surgeries, you know, last year that I ended up in the ICU with, and, you know, critical care with, you know, so I've had a rough go around. Like a lot of people didn't even know that I had, you know, epilepsy until I put it out there on Facebook, you know, two years ago because I started going to shows and I talked to people and I would stumble over my words and, you know, kind of embarrass you. So I just put it out there and I let everybody know, hey, look, this is something I'm battling. If I don't stay at a show long, I'm not being rude, but, you know, this is what I'm dealing with. Dude. I got respect for you, man. And keep doing what you do, brother. I really appreciate you as a mini trucker and as a as a guy that goes and supports the scene, dude. And you know, we wish you luck with all with the rest of your build, brother. And please keep in touch with us, Shane. I definitely will, man. It was good talking to you, my brother. Stay on the rise. We out here for yes, this sir. week, everyone. We want to thank Mini Truck Showdown again. That's coming this June, and we can't uh, say enough about Custom Car Show Productions along with Keg Media. We'll be out at Orange Beach Invasion late in the month of March. Shane, have a great night, my brother. All right, you do the same, brother.